Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the After Hours CBASE informational session for our SCUBA programs. This is part of a series of informational sessions we are holding for our 2024 CBASE cruise. You will notice that some details in each presentation will vary, and it's true, we do our best to standardize as much as possible, but CBASE's high venture programs are operated from four amazing and different locations and consists of 18 different programs with some varied operational requirements. We operate out of two locations in the Florida Keys, our main sea base location right here in Alamorada, Florida, and the Burton Environmental Center in Summerlin, the Key. We also offer programs in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands and the Abaco Islands in the Bahamas. Our directors each also have different perspectives about what is the most important to review for preparation. When communicating with sea base or reviewing requirements, it's important to know the program your unit is registered for. We have a staff member monitoring the comment section of this live event. So if any questions arise, as you watch, type them into the comment section. It will take about five minutes after the presentation to answer some of the questions out loud. Presentations will be recorded and published to the CBASE website within two to three business days, along with PowerPoint slides. This presentation will review the requirements and recommendations for the following CBASE High Venture programs. The SCUBA, the SCUBA Certification Program, the SCUBA Adventure Program, the SCUBA Live Aboard Program, and the SCUBA Advanced Marine Exploration Program. So without further ado, here's the presentation for our SCUBA programs. Hello and welcome to the Seabase After Hour Sessions for our SCUBA program. My name is Joe Angelo. I'm the SCUBA Director at Seabase in Alamorada, Florida. The following presentation will outline some general information resources, and frequently asked questions to assist you with planning your adventure. After this recording, we'll open the floor to questions you might have about our dive programs. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Seabase Scuba program here. We have four adventures at Scuba Adventures at Seabase. We have Scuba Certification, where people will come down to us and get Scuba certified while they stay on base. We have the Scuba Adventure Program, which is our most popular, and this is where people will arrive to Seabase already certified. They will stay at Seabase in our air-conditioned dorms, go out on our dive boats daily to get all their diving in. We have the Scuba Liveaboard Program, where people will come down already certified. They will live on a sailboat for a week while sailing in the Upper Keys and diving along the way. And we also have the Advanced Scuba Marine Exploration Program, where people come down, they will earn their Advanced Scuba Certification and work with planting corals with Coral Restoration Foundation. There's a lot of information that we publish on the Seabase website. First, information for each adventure is on the adventure page of the Seabase website. You will also find it in the participant guides. We have PowerPoint presentations for each adventure. We have a crew leader handbook on there that will help guide crew leaders through the process of bringing a crew here. And we have required documents for each adventure. Remember, each adventure has different required documents, so make sure you're using the correct ones. On the adventure page for scuba adventures, there's an expandable section covering each adventure. It covers the scuba adventure, scuba certification, scuba liveaboard, and scuba advanced marine exploration. It contains information and documents for each adventure, and it contains all the information to answer questions you may have about each adventure. We have the participant guide. This is found on our website under the resources section of the website. It contains information on each adventure. It talks about the medical restriction information. And again, contains information to answer your questions. And it also has a lot of frequently asked questions regarding the scuba adventures. We have the PowerPoint presentations. There's a separate presentation for each adventure. This was designed to get your crew together, go through the PowerPoint presentation, show them what the adventures are like, but also to ask some questions or help answer questions they may have regarding the programs. 
Again, these are listed under each scuba adventure on the website. It does talk again about medical restriction information and contains a lot of information to answer questions you may have. We have the scuba crew leader guide. One guide covers all the adventures. It's listed under each scuba adventure on the website. So no, no matter what adventure you're attending, you can just click on that PDF file. And again, we'll answer a lot of information and help guide the crew leader through the process of bringing a crew to Seabase. We have a required document section. This is a little bit different than previous years. This year we have put all the documents needed for each adventure into one PDF packet, and that is listed under each adventure. It contains a Seabase risk advisory. This is posted in other places on the website, but it will help guide you through any medical restrictions that we have for scuba programs at Seabase. This packet was also sent out to crew leaders in September. As far as medical documents, like I said before, they were emailed to all crew leaders that are on file for their particular adventure. It was sent out on September 11th of 23. In that packet, it was emailed to everybody. It is a crew leader sample documents to show the crew leaders what problems to look for on their documentation. It also had documents to be sent to each participant. Those documents were the Seabase Risk Advisory and required documents for each adventure. If you are a crew leader, please make sure to send that PDF packet to each participant or parent so they can get started on their documentation early. Remember, this is also found on the website. Medical documents and other related documents. They are due to Seabase by January 1st of 2024 for all spring arriving crews. And for summer crews, they are due to Seabase by March 1st, 2024. Now, if you have scuba certification cards, you are not yet complete with your class or wilderness first aid classes, those two items can arrive to us later but we do need all the other documents in place by the due dates. Review the documents prior to sending them to us. Make sure that everything is completed fully, that there are signatures on all the pages that need them, not only adult signatures, but youth signatures as well. We require the youth signatures because there's a lot of important information as divers they should know. So we ask the youth to sign that so they know what information is there to help make them better divers. Return this to Seabase as a crew packet. Please do not send them individually. Give them to your crew leader to send to us. Keep a copy of these documents for yourself and do not email the documents. Please send them either regular mail, priority mail, Federal Express, or UPS. You do not have to overnight them, save the money doing that. Some common issues that we have with the documentations. The BSA Annual Medical and Health page, Part C, usually has issues that are not completed. They don't have like the height, the weight, the blood pressure, the pulse, information like that is missing. Maybe there's a doctor's signature that's missing. If you have a doctor signing this, please make sure that they sign it and date it. Any incorrect forms, by using the form packet that we have for each adventure, we'll make sure this does not happen. So use the ones that we sent to you or sent to your crew leader. The RSTC Diver Medical Questionnaire, this has to be completed by all divers, whether it has all yeses or all noes or a mixture of it. It does need to be signed by a medical professional. Remember, for scuba certification programs, it needs to be signed by an MD or DO only. Incomplete, inaccurate, or missing forms will result in delays in your crew's clearance status. Remember, we have a lot of documents to go through. We have approximately 2,000 participants. We have to get through these documents in an orderly manner, so we need to have them in by the deadline date. 
some miscellaneous items that need to be sent in in addition to the documents. BSA adult leader trainings. We need these for all adults that are over 21 years of age. Youth protection, safe swim defense, safety afloat, and hazardous weather. Please do not send us documents that will be out of date by the arrival time of your crew. For those people that are 18 years of age, but not yet 21, they will need to complete youth protection training. Remember, we need one wilderness first aid adult trained and one CPR certified adult. Wilderness first aid, if you have somebody that is like a, a doctor, a nurse, an EMT paramedic, something like that, that training will suffice instead of wilderness first aid, but we will need to have documentation of those certifications. Also remember, you will need to submit a BSA unit swim classification. That's the BSA swim test. We, we will need that prior to your arrival also. We have a couple frequently asked questions that um, are common from people calling us or emailing us. Everybody needs a timing device of some type. It does not have to be a computer. It could be a watch, something that you could take underwater with you diving. It does not have to be an expensive watch. You could find these online for relatively inexpensive costs. Okay. You just need something that you can time your dives with. Every participant needs to have one. We use these so you could do your dive planning, know how long you're underwater, so you know how long you could safely stay underwater on all subsequent dives. Masks and snorkels, everybody needs to supply their own mask and snorkel. Seabase supplies all the other equipment, which would mean BCs, regulators, tanks, weights, fins, we supply all that. If you have your own equipment and you want to bring it, that's perfect. By all means, bring your own. Seabase does not supply wetsuits, but we do have those available for rent for those crews that are coming down in the winter and spring. We do not recommend those for summer crews because the water temperatures are just too warm and you will not, will not need them. The group sizes are listed in the participant guides on the website. Um, the scuba certification and scuba adventure is eight participants, including adults. Scuba liveaboard and scuba advanced marine exploration is 12 participants, including adults. Unfortunately, we do not have the availability to increase the group size. Remember, documentation dates have to be to us by January 1st for spring crews, March 1st for winter crews. Please send us documents that will be in date by your arrival time. Do not send us medical documents that will expire prior to your arrival. All documents need to be sent to Seabase prior to arrival. Do not arrive with documents. We want to have everything completed prior to your arrival. Padding materials for certification courses for the Advanced Scuba Marine and the Open Water Certification programs will be sent to the crew leader. Those normally go out right around the first of the year. The crew leader will then disseminate all the materials to their participants. On any of our medical conditions, sometimes people ask if we have waivers. Uh, there are no waivers for medical conditions. BSA is very conservative in the medical conditions that they will allow for scuba diving. And those are all listed in our information packages. Okay, so if there is an issue, um, we will not and we cannot give a waiver for a medical condition. Height and weight requirements. Sometimes people are confused by this because of the height weight chart on the BSA Part C form. Please remember, you do not need to worry about that height weight chart. As long as you are under the 295 pound limit, there is no problem. If you're over the 295 limit upon arrival, unfortunately, you will not be able to participate in the adventure and you will not be able to stay at sea base. Age limits for scuba diving are a little bit different than some of our other programs. 
and the minimum age is 13 years of age by the arrival date. So when you arrive, you have to be at least 13 years of age. Every participant has to be a registered BSA member. Okay. And early arrivals and late departures, unfortunately, we do not have the availability to have people arrive early or stay later. However, on our website, there's an area called Camp, Camp Jackson Sawyer. It's a little bit south of us, but they have family campgrounds available or family camping available, I should say. And they would be able to get you set up if you wanted to arrive a few days early or stay a few days after your adventure. Remember, once you check into Seabase, you cannot depart base while you are here, except for religious or medical reasons. If you have any questions after you went through the information, feel free to contact myself, the scuba director. My email address is joe.angelo at scouting.org or Natasha Angelo, the program office manager. Her email is natasha.angelo2 at scouting.org. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for listening to the presentation for our scuba programs. Okay. We're now going to take a couple minutes and answer uh, some of the questions that are popping up in the comments. Uh, my name is Ian Kessler. I'm the scuba commissioner here at Seabase. I help oversee the day to day operations of the dive program. And you heard just now from Joe Angelo. Um, we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can in the time we have, but fret not. We have more than enough. Uh, uh, time that you guys can reach out to us and we will